Hey there my fellow designers and creators, hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from Design Palette and I'm back again today with another tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to create a 3D glossy app icon in Figma. This is gonna be my first Figma tutorial on the channel. I've got a new series on Figma coming soon. So uh, without any further ado, let's get started. All right guys, so this is Figma, and for those of you who don't know what Figma is, Figma is a UI design tool. It's used for creating websites, it's used for designing websites and apps, and it's basically a vector-based tool because it's obviously UI design. And a lot of companies like Microsoft, Uber, they use Figma as a design software. It's like Sketch and Adobe XT if you guys want an example. But anyway, um, Figma is awesome because it's available for Mac, it's available for Windows, and it's available on the browser and it's completely free. So with a free account, you can make unlimited number of projects as you can see over here and uh, it's pretty good. So let's start off by just going ahead and creating a new file. So I'm just gonna click on new file. So the first thing you can do is to just go ahead and click here and then rename and I can just call it um, app icon. Uh, you know, just, you can rename it whatever you want and then click on enter and uh, uh, even though it says draft, it is saved. And the best part of Figma is it auto saves everything. You don't have to like save anything uh, by pressing Control S or Command S. So in Figma, artboards are called as frames. So if in Photoshop, if you have an artboard and a document, in Figma, it's called as a frame. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click over here. And as you can see, you have a frame and you have a slice. So all you have to do is grab, grab a frame and a frame is an artboard, all right? And when you click on it, you get a lot of different sizes that are predefined, but I'm gonna go ahead and then just drag one, all right? And I'm gonna go to the properties panel over here and I'm gonna go and set this to uh, 600 by 600, all right? So 600 by 600, all right? There we go. So this is, we have a frame, which is, and you can go ahead and rename this and I'm just gonna call this um, icon. All right, that's pretty much it. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a simple small rectangle, which is gonna be like the base of the icon. So I'm gonna go and press R or click here to get the rectangle tool. I'm gonna click, hold down shift and create a rectangle like so. Now I'm gonna make this like 300 by 300. All right, and just, and then we can click here to center it. And then I'm gonna add in some rounding. So I'm gonna come here to the rounding, which is basically the corner radius. And if you want to add individual corners, you can click here, which is going to allow you to add individual corners to different corners. But uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and then just add one. And I'm gonna make it like 65 pixels. And this is like the iOS app icon that you guys see. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and import an SVG of the Figma logo. All right, so this is the Figma logo and this is, comes as a SVG, scalable vector graphic. It's not a PNG and it's not a JPEG, it's an SVG which is vector based. Now this comes inside a frame itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and actually select all this and remove this out and uh, and then I'm gonna press Control G to group it and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring it over here and I'm, I'm gonna hold down Shift and Alt on my keyboard and I'm gonna scale this down like so. I'm gonna reduce it to probably around 200 pixels in the height and we're gonna go ahead and then just drag it over here and we can align this vertically and horizontally and it should look pretty much like this. All right, it's looking pretty good. Now the settings I'm gonna to use to make uh, it 3D and pop out with all the shadows and effects and inner shadow and all that depends on the size at which your object is. So in this case it's 200. So if, you're, if your logo is probably 800 pixels big uh, then you would have to tweak the settings a little bit more to your liking. So you would have to play around a little bit with that, but in this case, if you want to just follow around by putting in the exact values, you can reduce it to around 200 to 50 range and uh, it should work pretty well. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is you wanna, you wanna make sure you have the group selected. And uh, I'm gonna come over here um, and actually I'm gonna make this, you know, probably a little white for now, just so that we can focus on the logo. And I'm gonna come to the effects over here and I'm gonna click on plus. Now that's automatically gonna add a drop shadow, but we have three options, four actually, inner shadow, drop shadow, layer blur, and a background blur. I'm gonna use an inner shadow. All right, this is what we're gonna get. And I'm gonna go and click on this this the sun icon, which is going to give us the properties. And here are the settings that I'm gonna add. Uh, I'm gonna add 40 for the blur, and the Y is gonna be 20, all right? And I'm gonna change the color of this to be pure white. And I'm gonna set the opacity to 50%. And also, I'm gonna click this, which is gonna add blending mode, and I'm gonna set this to overlay, all right? All right, so that's just one. Now, 
Another way that we, we could do it is by individually adding the effects to that element. So let's actually make a copy so that in the end we can decide which one we want to do, which one, which option we would prefer. And here uh, I'm going to go ahead and then just go to the group. All right. I can click over here, which is going to highlight it. I can press command control C to copy and I can delete it from here. I can select this single element. All right, you can hold down control and click to go inside a group and I'm going to paste it over there. So the inner shadow has been applied only to this, all right? So not to everything else. All right, so I'm going to come back over here in this on this. We're adding it to the whole group. OK, so the next one is to add in another inner shadow. You can just click and that's you can create another inner shadow. So I'm going to go and change this to inner shadow. This is going to be 50 percent black. All right, we're going to set the blending mode to overlay and here I'm going to set this to minus 30 and the blur is going to be double, uh, which is 60. All right, so um, let's see if you if we can actually look at it. Uh, I think another thing we got to do is set it to overlay, which we did. All right, so there you go. You can see some amount of darkness, uh, which is pretty interesting. So I can just copy this. Let's come over here, hold control and click to select that, and then we can paste it. So we add it only to that one over there. All right, so let's select it again. Let's add in another inner shadow. All right, so we can add in another inner shadow. Um, this time it's going to be around um, seven or um, five and then we we'll set the blur to something like 15. All right. And I'm going to set this to white and set the opacity of this to like 70 percent. All right. So it's a little bit more glossy and we're going to go and set the blending mode of this to overlay. All right. Pretty good. All right. You can see some amount of nice glossiness. I'm just going to go select this, copy this, come over here and select this one and then I'm going to paste it right over there. All right, there we go. So I can hide it and I can see the difference. All right, guys, before we get started, I just have two quick announcements. The first one is about my new Patreon accounts. So of all those of you who want exclusive design benefits and perks, you can definitely get them by becoming an official patron. This is my Patreon account and I've got four levels, level one, level two, level three and level four and higher the levels gives you higher the benefits. And some of the benefits are exclusive discount course for my Udemy courses, design critiques, and one-on-one -on -one interaction with me over a video call. So the link to this will be down below the description and definitely do check it out if you guys are interested in becoming a patron. So the second one is about my new design community on Discord. Discord is basically a chatting app which is available on Mac, Windows, Android and iOS so you guys can log in from anywhere. And on my Discord community we talk about design related stuff, we share ideas, we share our work, we share your portfolios, get feedback, answer questions. And we have a dedicated channel for each type of design. So definitely consider checking out if you guys want to hang out with other designers and become a better designer. All right, so now we can get back to the video. Okay, uh, so the next one, let's come over here. Let's add in another inner shadow. All right, uh, we're going to set this to 15 pixels. All right, it's a black color. All right, it's black color. And here in the blur, I'm going to make this 20. And in the Y, I'm going to make it uh, minus 40. All right, and I want to set the blending mode to overlay. Okay. All right, so the next one is let's add another one again. And here, uh, let's set this to 20 for the blur and the Y also 20. And oh, this is supposed to be an inner shadow. All right, so 20 and 20. And uh, we can leave it at 25 and I'm gonna set this to white color. And again, I'm gonna set the blending mode of this to overlay. All right, so now it looks much more nice and much more glossy. Now what we can do, we forgot to apply the ones to here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all this. And I'm going to select uh, this one, the entire one. I can come over here, click and hold down shift. Select all this. I can press control C and then come over here and then press control V. Select this one, press control V, control V, control V, control V. All right. So now each of these has some kind of a glossy effect, but here everything is, is one thing. All right. So you can pick whichever one you want. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and press Control C, Control V, which is going to make a copy. And on the bottom one, I'm going to call this shadow. All right. Now for the shadow layer, I'm going to go and s make sure you are selecting the entire group. You can go to fill and you can add in a black color or you can go and click here and add in a pure black color. Now you can't see it. The reason is because it's at the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the shadow. We're just going to bring it down a touch. So hold down shift and press the down arrow key once. And you know, that should be good enough. And also we can go ahead and reduce down the width. So make sure you have this unchecked 
and then probably from 133, yours might be different. I'm gonna set it to 125, all right? And I'm gonna center this like so, all right? And then I'm gonna go and set the blending mode of this to overlay and set this to like 25%. Now you probably can't see it. That's because of this background. So for now, let's just go ahead and set it to normal. And I'm gonna add in a layer blur. And actually we can get rid of all these effects. We don't need all these effects on this, all right? And here on in the effects, we can add in a uh, layer blur. And this is up completely up to you. You can set it to whatever you want. I'm gonna set it to 10, all right? Let's actually set it to like eight. Okay, so now it looks pretty nice and interesting. We can shift a little bit up if you think it's too much. All right, and I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna come over here and then click on, make sure you select the frame so that it pastes in the same place. I'm gonna press Control V and I can bring this down and then we have the same shadow over there as well. Pretty cool. So now you can go ahead and play around with this uh, rectangle. So I'm gonna apply a linear gradient. So I'm gonna click over here and from solid, I'm gonna change it to linear and I'm gonna get two stops, all right? So this is the first stop and this is the second stop. So on the first stop, I'm gonna add in just a random color, which is 0085FF, that's just a blue color. And then I can come over here, make sure that this is opacity set to 100, all right? And here I can add in a different color, probably a darker one, which is um, say 001DB and two. All right, so it's a dark color. And uh, we can close this, we can go select the shadow that we created and we could set this to uh, overlay, all right? And from 50%, we could make it like 50% if uh, that's what you want. Now I can select this, I can click here, I can control C and then I can paste this here as well. I can delete this one and uh, we can select the shadow and then set this to overlay and probably set it like 50%. All right, so basically you can see there's a lot of difference. We can make another variation if you want. So I can just select this, hold down Alter Option and then hold down Shift and then we can drag it over to the side like so. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select this, hold Alt and drag and make a copy of this. And I can just delete all the effects, all right? And I can add in a different color background. So I can select this and I can select this one and then for the darker one, I can select this one. So we have like a different color, but I think the blue one is looking pretty good. You can, you can do anything that you want, you want to be honest. Um, and you can even add in a background color for this. So you could go ahead and select the uh, blue tone and you can reduce this down to like a tiny touch like so. All right, just some nice blue color. All right, you can make this into a solid or a gradient. That's completely up to you. Another thing that we can do is we can add some shadow to this itself. So you can select the rectangle and then go to effects and then click here to add a drop shadow. And I'm gonna set this to like 25 and set this to 40, all right? And that gives us a nice shadow. And an another thing we can do is we can set this to like 40%, but we can change the color of this to be kind of a dark blue color, all right? Pretty interesting. So I can select this, I can select the effects, I can copy that and I can come over here and then uh, on the rectangle, I can paste it so that gets pasted as well. All right, so it's a pretty nice, simple way to create fun app icons. And the way to export it is, there's a couple of ways of exporting it. You can select this entire frame and you can, in the export section, you can choose whether you wanna export it as a PNG, JPG, SVG, or a PDF. So you're probably uploading this to Dribbble or Twitter. You can go ahead and set your own dimensions and you can choose to export it at 1x, 2x, 4x, or whatever you want, and even add in a certain number, right? And it says export contents only, and you can add in a suffix as well, and you can choose to export the icon. Or you can go ahead and select all these three, press Control G to group them, so all this is one thing, and then you can go ahead and export only this, uh, and that only that's gonna get exported. That's pretty much it for this video guys Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing awesome content and I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then take care and bye-bye